Hi folks, welcome back to the TPMS Australia multi-tow unit uh, user information videos. What we'll do now is we'll show you how to uh, mesh the um, locking collar and the transmitter onto the valve of your wheel. Uh, and what we've done just for ease of uh, demonstration is um, a loose valve here and uh, we're just going to go through the process of how you install it if you wish to use the locking collar. Now, simply remove your dust cap, um, place the locking collar with the three little nodes facing up over the valve as such. All right, then screw the transmitter on over that just like a normal dust cap. Make sure it's reasonably tight, never be too tight. And you see that that locking collar spins around there. Right, Just mesh that up in the little areas of the transmitter like so, so there's no gap between them. Okay, now we then simply take our Allen key, tighten that grub screw up, and that grub screw will actually bind into the brass of your valve stem. Okay, it won't damage it, so don't be too concerned. All right, now that has now formed a nice meshed unit. Now, you cannot actually twist that transmitter at all. Uh, you will actually twist the valve itself within the wheel uh, if you try to do that on your own vehicle. So um, this uh, is very important for people who have two concerns um, which come up in questions quite often. Uh, one is for uh, the safety of the transmitters over long corrugated roads, um, river crossings and for a theft deterrent. Now obviously you won't lose that as a result of a, um, a, a corrugated road trip uh, because it is so tight. Uh, now secondly, unless you've got that specific size Allen key with you as you walk past the car and decide that you want to annoy the owner and steal all his um, transmitters, uh, you can't actually do that. So that alleviates both of those concerns. Now what we're going to do now is we'll put some batteries in the unit and power it up and we'll show you the home display screen so that uh, you know what it looks like when it's going to turn on. So, I'll take this transmitter off. Now I've got a wheel sitting beside me that um, we can use internally. Okay, so we're going to take this unit and we'll use the um, we we'll easier the two options since we're inside, and we'll use two AA batteries. Um, most customers use the AA batteries. Uh, make sure you use a reasonably good quality uh, brand. Um, simply because an alkaline battery will last so much longer and we'll explain why uh, later on but it does have a sleep function on the unit that will extend the battery life. So unit switched on, powered up, I'll put it back there so that we can see the display. Now that's actually your home screen. Now you'll see it spinning through the four positions that are preset from the factory and you'll see the dashes on the screen and you'll see the little battery indicator just down in the bottom right hand corner there. Okay, so this is what your unit will always do. It will always start from the front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and continually scroll through. Now you'll see there that the backlight uh, stops after about 10 seconds or so. Pressing either of the two buttons at the front will bring the backlight straight back up. Okay, so it's not designed to stay on all the time. It's a battery saving function as well as uh, there is no real point to having a light on um, during night driving. It, uh, it does uh, deter some people um, from putting it within their line of sight. Now, while it's scrolling around there, what we'll do is we'll actually tighten these four transmitters up on the rim that I've got here. And you'll actually see that the monitor will pick them up I'll just get that backlight back on. As I tighten them up, yeah, there's 35 psi in this wheel. Right, so as I tighten them up one by one, now I'm just tightening them up onto the valve stem, you'll see that the unit is actually picking them up. So we've got 35 front left, front right 34, rear left 34, rear right 34. Okay, so I'm happy that there's one PSI difference that shows you that it's not staged. Right. Um, 
The error rate is one to one and a half PSI. So look, with one PSI difference, um, that's acceptable. Right, so that's essentially the installation of the transmitters and getting you to your home screen. Now, the unit comes preset from the factory at 32 PSI. Uh, what we'll do is, in the next video, we'll show you how to start programming uh, the different pressures and different transmitter positions uh, for your own use.